Hi, good afternoon or evening, and welcome to Special Education in the New Norm 2021 and Beyond. My name is Lisa Zukoff, and I'm the New York State PTA Family Engagement Coordinator, and I'm here with Tina Schuck, the New York State PTA Special Education Specialist, and we're really excited to have some time to talk to you today. So first of all, we'd like to introduce ourselves and talk about our story. So on the next slide, you're going to see pictures of our children. These are our children. Those three boys on the right are mine. And when my oldest son transitioned into his local school is when I started discovering the SEPTA and the support that it offered me. And in doing that, I found my voice. And the best part was finding that it wasn't just a voice I could use to support my children, I could support everybody's children. And it's been my passion and my joy to work with the PTA to help advocate for all children. So that's my story, Tina. Hi everyone, my name is Tina Sheck and I am the New York State PTA Special Education Specialist. I have three children. I know from the picture it's only one. I couldn't find all three in one picture, so sorry about that. Um, they all have a variety of learning disabilities to medical disabilities. I wanted to become more involved in PTA from a special education point of view because I realized when I was at a traditional PTA meeting, some of the concerns that I have for my children and others like them were not being addressed. While it was great to learn about book fair and holiday boutique, I wanted to learn about how to help my child who was struggling to read and how to help them engage and make friendships with other children. So I became involved with my SEPTA and started to really look at it from a special education um, perspective. So that's why I'm here. So let's get started and thank you for joining us tonight. Um, what is special education? Special education is a free appropriate public education specially designed to meet the unique needs of a child with a disability, not only in the classroom, but also appropriate related services to prepare them for further education, employment, and independent living. Special education encompasses the programs which serve students with mental, physical, emotional, and behavioral disabilities. The purpose of special education is to allow our students to reach their fullest potential by providing an appropriate public education designed to fit their unique and special needs. If you're new to the special education process, um, if your child is from birth to three years, they're usually um, referred to early intervention. If your child is between the age of three to five years of age, they're usually referred to CPSE, which is the Committee for Preschool Education. And if your child is five years to the age of 21, or if they are um, graduated with a local or regents diploma, they're referred to CSC, uh, Committee for Special Education. Initials, um, once they are referred, an initial set of evaluations must include at least a social history, a psychoeducational evaluation, including IQ and academic testing, a classroom observation, and a recent uh, physical evaluation. Other possible evaluations might include a physical occupational therapy, speech language evaluation, a neurological or neuropsychological exam, or an assistive technology evaluation, or a psychiatric evaluation, or vision or hearing exam. Um, after the uh, Department of Education or whichever committee um, receives your consent to evaluate your child, they have 60 calendar days to complete the evaluation. Please remember that 60 days starts from when you, get, when you send back your consent for those evaluations, not when you request evaluations to be done. If your child does receive services, follow-up evaluations are usually done every three years, which is called a triannual, but you can request an early re-evaluation at any time. Special education also includes related services. Um, related services is any supportive service provided to a child with a disability that helps the child access and receive a benefit from special education. Below are just a sample of a few examples of what kind of related services they can receive, which includes special uh, speech services, physical occupational therapy, assisted technology, nursing services if they have a medical disability, social work counseling, transportation, which includes to and from getting to school, job coaching when they get to um, the high school age, or vocational services to help them with job placement. So these are just some samples of the related services they can um, receive. And also, um, as a side note, the, these related services can be provided, um, let's say if the child winds up in the hospital, can be provided in the hospital setting. It doesn't necessarily have to be in school or at home, depending on what your circumstances are. Liz, you're on. Sorry, <laughs> the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, 
IDEA is a law that makes available a free appropriate public education faith to eligible children with disabilities throughout the nation and ensures special education and related services to those children. It's important to know that IDEA does not cover college students. That's a popular misconception. To qualify for an IEP, a student's disability needs to directly impact the student's education and needs to fall into one of 13 disability categories that IDEA covers. So it's important, and at the meeting when that's discussed, should the child be eligible, they're going to discuss which category the child falls into. Now, as Kina was just speaking, and I am now, we're using a lot of acronyms, and there are a lot of acronyms, many of which we're not even going to touch on today. So there's a link here. It's a hyperlink. We're going to put it in the chat. And also, the Individual Disabilities Education Act link is a hyperlink for more information on that as well. Um, but once this is posted afterwards, you will be able to click on the links. They will be active. But we're going to also put those in the chat so you can utilize those resources if any acronyms come up that you haven't been faced with before and you need further explanation. So the next slide, please. So if a child is eligible for a special education services, an individualized education program, which is a written statement of the educational program designed to meet the child's at individual needs, individual, is developed by the Committee on Preschool Special Education or the Committee on Special Education. They're either called CPSE or CSE at a meeting. These meetings, these CSE or CPSE meetings, are to be held at a mutually agreeable time and place with appropriate advance notice. It may be held virtually because these times are changing, but all the same provisions are in place, including interpreter services for a different language or even ASL. Parents can ask for whatever services that they need in order to be an active part of making any decisions about their children's education. They, the agency has to make steps to ensure that the child, the parents of the child with a disability are present at any IEP team meetings or have the ability to participate. The ways they go about doing this are notifying parents of the meeting with advance, enough early notice to ensure that they have the opportunity to attend and scheduling the meeting at a time and place that we can all be there. It's very important that everybody works together. This notification is on an invitation to attend the meeting, and that notification has to include the purpose, time, and location of the meeting, who's going to be there, and that parents and public agencies have the right. So you can invite somebody else with knowledge or special expertise about your child, including related services, perhaps if you're you know, supplying something at home, your child's physician or therapist, and that you can bring that person to the meeting in order to be a part of this discussion about your child. So it's important everybody a part of that because we are all here together to collaboratively work to advocate for our children. Tina? So there's a parent member that might be part of your CPSC, CSE meetings um, that can help parents to participate in the meeting by explaining procedures asking questions and clarifying information. But it's really important to note that they are community members and not parent advocates because that's um, sometimes confusing for some people. Um, as Lisa mentioned, parents can bring an outside professional or anyone they feel necessary to the meeting. You should inform the committee if you are bringing someone um, and it's always important to do everything in writing. A parent member does not part have to participate in your meeting. If you would like a parent member to participate, you must request in writing at least 72 hours before your meeting. The parent, student, or committee member can make this request. Those are the only people that could usually request the parent member to be a part of the meeting. Parent members are parents of children with disabilities and parent of students who have been declassified within a period not to exceed five years, or the parent of a student has graduated within the period not to exceed five years. So these are all special um, needs parents that have been involved in, in, in the community and have some, know have some knowledge of the process. But remember, they can't give you any legal advice, so you can't ask them, what should I do, because they won't be able to advise you on that. Parent members do go through training given by authorized parent centers. Um, so they do receive training uh, and are able to help answer questions as far as um, if you want some clarification as to you know, what 
what maybe possibly, for example, the acronyms are. Um, so they, they can answer generalized questions like that, but they can't specifically give you any legal advice or tell you what to do. So it's really important for you to remember that. Section 504. So the Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 requires public schools to offer accommodations for eligible students with disabilities. Section 504 is an anti-discrimination civil rights statute that requires the needs of students with disabilities be met as adequately as the needs of the non-disabled students are met. It actually states that no otherwise qualified individual with a disability in the United States as defined in the law shall solely by reason of his or her disability be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to the discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance your school. So the key factor in determining whether a person is covered by Section 504 is whether their physical or mental impairment results in a substantial limitation of one or more major life activities. Major life activities as defined in the regulation include functions such as caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, walking, seeing, hearing, speaking, breathing, learning, and working. 504 plans are not part of special education and are different from IEPs. They are covered by different laws and they work in different ways. But ultimately they have the same goal, which is to help provide a support for our children and make sure that they all are receiving the very best public education and that they can absolutely exceed. I am important to note uh, the link down here to the IEP versus 504 plan, what's the difference? highly recommend you check it. Tina and I were both discussing how we utilize this all the time in ourselves and also in speaking with other parents. It's a lot of information comparing the two plans, um, the, two, the plan and the program, letting you know the differences, exactly what's covered. There's even a video. So it's really helpful and it shares a lot of information. And if it's something that somebody asks you about, because I think it's a very common question, this is a great resource to get right to the answer. So it's very important to share the correct information um, on the, the 504 versus the IEP. So I hope that you utilize checking out that particular plan, that particular link. Tina? So making up for lost times, as we all know, um, what happened recently with the pandemic, um, it was unprecedented. So actually what happened on June 30th was signed into a law that allows a, stu a school district to continue to provide certain special education services to certain students who may have turned 21 during 2019-2020 uh, or 2020-21 school year. Um, that was New York State Assembly Bill A A8021. A um, so that was just recently signed into law for those students that were aging out that they weren't able to access those resources because they weren't allowed to um, be in school to um, finish out their time and get that um, support that they needed. So this extended their time um, to be um, get those support services. This provides that a student enrolled in an individualized education plan during certain school years may continue to receive educational, educational services until the student completes the services pursuant to the individual education plan or turns 23 years of age, whichever is sooner. Um, there's also compensatory services for students with disabilities as a result of the COVID pandemic. Um, this link will show you the guidance from the New York State Department of Education to school districts about services that your child might have missed um, during the time of pandemic when we were all on remote learning. So um, as Alyssa mentioned, these hyperlinks will be available and you can click onto them to read the actual um, guidance that was given to school districts. Um, also, we provided a link to nine recommendations for inclusive learning recovery for students with disabilities, because as we know, as special needs parents, our, our kids um, not only missed out on the social emotional connections, but there are other things that they need to make up for. And this, um, this is just some um, guidance and some recommendations that we thought might help um, you to see where your students might need some, some additional um, resources. Um, another thing, you know, we mentioned it before, we touched on it, um, but I would love to reiterate is when you send any 
communication to your teachers, to your school district, always put it in writing. Don't do it on a phone call. You want to have that paper trail that says, okay, on this date, I asked um, for this evaluation, or on this date, I asked for a copy of test results. You know, always have that paper trail. So always put things in writing. You know, email is a great way to do it. So um, please make sure, you know, it's one of the tips I always got when I started off in the special um, needs um, process that somebody said to me, always have a paper trail, always have some kind of backup available. Oh, that, you know, that's great advice. If I can just build on that. Um, I know a lot of students were being homeschooled this year and there's a lot of remote learning. So much of what's discussed at these meetings is based on data, which is typically seen by the, determined by the parent, the, I'm sorry, the teachers who are seeing your children on a regular basis, but you're the one that's home helping them. And regardless of even if your child was in school full time and you were helping them with homework, make sure to keep a log of whatever you note is going on in your child's work. Is there a particular subject that's giving them difficulty? Are they getting frustrated about one topic? Are they having trouble pulling out certain uh, examples when they're writing an essay or is it math? What is it that your child is struggling with or what is it that you are struggling with helping with your child? because that is important information. You are the best person to observe your child on what's going on and write it down and keep it dated so that you can see a really good picture of how your child has grown during the year, which is good for you. But you can also see the areas that you could work on, the areas that you're worried that they're struggling with. And this is data and this is information that you can bring to the meeting and you can share with the team to help benefit your child. Don't ever, think that your words, that your vision doesn't count. It does because it's your voice for your child and everything you see at home can affect them. Perhaps they're doing really well in a topic in school with the level of support they're receiving in school, but they're still struggling at home. They needs to be pointed out because they may need some additional supports to help them be more independent. And that's certainly a goal. We all want them to achieve that on their own. So what Tina's point about writing it down um, for communication and for your observations is really important and date everything, keep track of everything. Everything should be kept together, um, especially now because a lot is being sent electronically, which is great, but our email boxes are probably pretty full. So maybe <laughs> set up a folder, right? You know, Absolutely. in your inbox that just relating to this special education stuff so that you know exactly where to find it and what's going on. Um, every, anything we can do to support our children and to make our lives easier, um, we should definitely, definitely do. And Alyssa, is absolutely, Alyssa is absolutely right. And, you know, it, it is very important to know you are your child's advocate. So it, it and it, there's never a wrong question or a, a, a silly concern. You know, always ask those questions, ask those concerns, you know, have that communication. It, it's really important for especially our children with special needs. So we've discussed a lot and just wanted to give you some extra resources. If you go to the New York State PTA website, there are great links to amazing resources for special education, also things related specifically to COVID, but really any of these resources we've discussed, they'll be over there. There's also links to web chats, to workshops that we've held previously. They're all over there. So please go explore that website, go find the links, do the research so that you can have all the information you need. Knowledge is power. Um, another way to get information is certainly feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are here to happy to support you in however you need. Um, but also now the best part is we get to interact with you. So we obviously recorded this ourselves, um, but we are going to stop this recording. We're so excited to be able to answer any questions or, you know, listen to what you have to say if you wanted to explore anything that we already discussed. But thank you so very much for joining with us. And we look forward to talking to you in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.